Am I okay down here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Alright, so we'll call this meeting to order so ordinance. Far, we're far away. I know, it's so <laughs> far away. Ordinance something you guys got all your technology over there, it's not. No. Mm-hmm. Uh call to order January twenty seventh, ordinance subcommittee meeting six PM, I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um so <laughs> so much stuff. So I was thinking that for this meeting we could uh take a look at what we have on our agenda and, and prioritize a little bit and then um, sign some tasks. I know that uh, one of the things that we've had on our agenda for a little while is the sign, and it would be good to start looking at that maybe since we don't really have a lot of other things on the agenda. We could, because that, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there. That needs work. <laughs> Did you take a look at it? Yeah, I was yeah. just saying to JP, I wonder how we're gonna approach this. Well, this is a lot. I think I mean I have I think I think I have an idea. So, um, you know, basically the two things we have on our agenda are the sign ordinance and the the food truck. Now, the food truck thing, I think we're still in research phase. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I did talk to Miss um, uh, Duda about the food truck ordinance. You know, as it stands right now, they just have to, it's, it's not very cumbersome for food trucks to come into East Hampton. Okay. Um, the process is relatively simple. Um, it's, not, it's not super costly, which I was just worried that people were going to have to come in and they were going to have to get multiple permits. And um, mm-hmm. So, you know, if, if at the end of that we feel like there's nothing really that we can do to make it easier for food trucks to come into East Hampton. I don't necessarily know that we need to further legislate food trucks. We don't want to restrict them. We don't want to really restrict them. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I think the only thing that could kind of come out of that, which could be interesting, Mm -hmm. which is uh, Melissa's brother has a food truck in Boston. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that is really helpful, because she was telling me, one of the things that's very helpful for them is having a commissary. So allowing, and I don't know if we would need to do this by ordinance or if we could, or if it was just something that could happen, but um, you know, having something within the zoning that allows a community kitchen to be used by food trucks to do their food prep. Mm, that's right, I couldn't remember what that. Yeah, so it's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a kitchen mm-hmm. that is used by multiple food trucks where they prepare all their food. And then they go out on the truck and dis- disperse it. I guess my question, if we had something like that, would it be a fee per time? Like, well, why would someone with a food truck, with kitchen access within the truck, and I'm basing this totally on, like, food truck shows, mm-hmm. why would they want to do it inside a different building rather than just utilizing the space that they already have? Well, I think, I think the, the, whole, the point of the, having a commissary is having um, large space to allow you to do the major prep that you would need to do before you go into the truck and, and have refrigerate, refrigeration space. So you could do... Um, you know, less major prep in, like if you had to smoke meats or something, that's hard to do in a truck. So it might be a place where, um, you know, they do their big major food prep and then um, they do the, the smaller put together stuff in the truck. Would you consider having a survey for food truck owners or people who are considering food truck in Western Massachusetts, if that's something they're even seeking? Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, I know that every food truck needs, it's by law, they have to have a kitchen they're attached to. Uh-huh. So the, okay. it, it's, a, it's a mandatory requirement. Whether there's any legislation we can pass to allow, I don't know if, I don't think we have that as a piece in our zoning. I don't think we have like a community, like a commissary kitchen Mm-hmm. I know we have restaurant, we have, so, I mean, and, and I don't know if it's necessarily needed because there's a bunch of churches in town that have community kitchens, community kitchens. which could be used if they were approached, you know, because they're probably underutilized. But, that, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. so for the food truck thing, that's kind of the, the where, I, where we kind of left off. Okay. Um, but, uh. What do they do now? So, for example. Where, where, where do they go? Mission Cantina has a food truck. 
that they will bring to East Hampton. Mm -hmm. And it's based out of their restaurant in Amherst. Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of the prep work in Amherst, and then they load up the truck, and then they go on site, and then they prepare the food mm -hmm. on site. So, um, <clears throat> and the, as far as the other ones, I've, I think there's another, like, fresh food truck. I can't remember what it's called, like, farm fresh food. Um, and I'm not sure where they're based out of. Mm -hmm. In other communities, uh, I, I frankly haven't seen a lot of food trucks, so yeah. I'm not all that familiar with the concept. Right. Uh, I must say, I'm thinking like, you know, okay, Sprint, but I'm thinking of business opportunities, so my mind's spinning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking, and I'm going, okay, could East Hampton become a hub? For, it could be. It, for I, for something grander than just the East Hampton area. Yeah. But, like, could you kind of set it up where people, I mean, if there really are places that go to Hoyoke and Springfield mm -hmm. and Westfield and Northampton, well, come to East Hampton, and you could work in, in this section, and we could have a... Yeah, and that's... Um, I don't know. One of the yeah, things that's we happening... We can have lots of food workers there prepping for you and here and there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, one of the things that's happening over at the, the mills. So if you, at the, in the back of the mills where they just put in all the parking, uh -huh. um, the two breweries are pulling in food trucks. Uh, in, the, in the summer, it was like almost a weekly occurrence mm -hmm. where there'd be food. And so once people start figuring that out, there's going to be more food trucks coming to East Hampton because when you have that many people drawn to the breweries with this huge open parking lot, brand new now, mm -hmm. um, and all these people, it's right on the bike path, there's the park right there, so on Thursday nights when there's performances, Friday nights when there's bands, Saturday nights when they show movies, you know, I have a, I have a feeling that area is probably going to be like the central food hub, food truck hub of East Hampton. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what we can do to encourage that or to help that, but I think that would be because food trucks are becoming more of a um, kind of a niche thing. Like Boston has hundreds of food trucks. Mm -hmm. um, they also have a 20-page ordinance. Okay, so right now in East Hampton, I know of at least two that I that seem to be more permanent. Mm -hmm. One is that trailer that's sitting up on the edge over where the circle is. Yeah, 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 the sausage place or whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That be considered a food truck? I think that's a food stand. Okay. So I think that that... That's a good question. What is that covered under? And the next... The next one that I can think of is that when Demented Effects was, there was open, there like was a popcorn thing. and it was permanently there for right. the season. Right, right, right. So would that be considered a? Food that would be truck? a food truck, yeah. Okay. So let, let's find out about because what we need to do is we need to ask um, Miss Duda about that mm -hmm. because um, let's see food truck at. Was she? I wonder if she's still here. Did she leave? Kelly left because I know yeah. they are here. I just till yeah. six on uh, Wednesdays. Right, food truck and yeah. cycle. No harm in checking. Maybe she could, or, or maybe she could come to our next meeting. Yeah, I can. I can send her be. an email. Mm -hmm. Even though I got in an argument with her last time I was talking to her <laughs> about cigarette advertising. Oh really? I was just like. I feel like you know big billboards outside of businesses advertising cigarettes are. Uh, like not very oriented towards the health of the community. She disagreed with me. Okay. But is that her? There she goes. Hey, would you be um, would you be willing to come to our meeting, the next meeting we have, mm -hmm. to talk about the food truck ordinance? What? What is the next meeting? Uh, well, we haven't set a date yet for it, yeah. but we we were just wondering. Maybe you can answer it just really quickly. Um, the the little food stand that's set up on Pulaski Circle um, is that considered a food truck? Do they have to get the same permit? Yes. We are an official meeting. Yes. Okay. Are okay. Official meeting. yes. okay. Um, the um. You can go home. We don't. Yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't have to drag you to a that's meeting that you didn't mind. know about. Well, these are. We just had two questions. We weren't quite sure. All right. So the. The woman operating that um, mobile vendor operation. Mobile vendor. So it's uh, under the mobile vendor. Well, he, kind of. Not really. Okay. She's kind of grandfathered. When I got here, she was operating. She doesn't meet all of the criteria for a mobile vendor, but uh -huh. since she was in place, I didn't challenge that okay. when I came here. And uh, 
she she does pretty well on her inspections, and uh -huh. I've never had a complaint. Okay. So it no, nothing has ever pushed the envelope for me on that. When you say since she's been in place, do you mean that it's in the stationary place, or that she was already established? Was she established. was already established. Okay. Uh, some many years, I guess, prior to me mm -hmm. getting here. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess she's kind of grandfathered and varianced, yep. uh, but she, she isn't operating out of a, a permanent kitchen, which if you're a mobile vendor, by definition, you're required to have a place that, where you store your food, where you go back at the end of the day and right. sanitize and wash your dishes and your, your facility, um, and so forth and so on. So. Uh, she doesn't meet all the qualifications of a mobile vendor. I'm not, in between somewhere. We yeah. just we permit her as a food establishment because that's how it used to be. Okay. Um, if, however, she ceased operation and, and somebody else come along and wanted to do the same thing, I'd say no. Right. Unless they met all the criteria of a mobile vendor. Mm -hmm. A mobile vendor usually is uh, a seasonal vendor. Also, right. and she seems to operate year round, which is the yeah. other puzzling thing. Yeah, because it's cold now. Well, it's not yeah. really cold. Although I, guess. I, I don't <laughs> see, I mean, I see that she does close down every year, for, and it's a little unclear to me for how long. Now, right. all of that having been said, something uh, happened this year. The fire department saw that she had a sign out on the lawn there that said French fries, and that caught his attention, huh. um, Captain Wayne Henneman, because she has to have a full compliant ANSEL system, fire suppression system, if she's frying foods. Mm -hmm. So he wrote her a letter and said, you have to have this thing, call me, and I want to see what your plan is for remediating this by a certain date, February, I think. And this was back in uh, October or November. So simultaneous with that, when we issued her permit to operate a food establishment, we issued it only for two months. And we said, renewal of this is contingent upon you meeting the fire department requirements because we can't permit you to serve food if the fire department is not allowing you to operate. <laughs> so, and I said, call me. We've never heard from her, which is very mm -hmm. interesting. Now, she's not completely conversant in English writing, but she has a son who perfectly is. And in fact, when I was on a food inspection once, because I asked her some questions that kind of befuddled her a little, she got her son right on the, foot, on the phone. Hmm. And I talked with him, and I was very satisfied that between the two of them that they, were, they got everything done they were supposed to get done. Right. Mm -hmm. It was just a communication problem. Hmm. So um, I think this is just a communication problem, but why she hasn't responded to his letter or to mine that I enclosed with the permit is the puzzle. That's interesting. Yeah. So it's funny you mention it, because just this week I was thinking of her right. and thinking, She's closed up now. Is she going to reopen? Is she not going to reopen? Is she going to call me? I, I'm going to have to poke her pretty soon. Right. You know, give her a poke, you know, a call mm -hmm. or a letter or something and say, what's going on? Because I, I don't particularly want her to be closed down. We just want it to make sure that she's in compliance with what she needs to be in compliance with. Great. Mm -hmm. For the food part, she's good because she's grandfathered. Right. Uh, for the fire part, she's not good. Okay. And the other, the other one we were wondering about was the one that was out in front of the button building. Um, it during like, the Halloween during thing. During the Halloween thing. Um, which one was that? It was what like a. It looked, it, well, I think it was like pop. It was like a pop. It looked like a carnival. Uh, yeah, that guy. Thing. That you know? wasn't this year though. That was it, last year. It was right? this year too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was this year too. Yeah. So um, if they were going to oh, get, well, they would probably okay. do mobile vendor as well. Right? Yeah, I, I remember that. I wasn't here at the time. I think Dennis Lacourse inspected okay. that for me. That's why I don't remember okay. that. But he he. I do remember inspecting him last year as well. Right. Um. So, he's a perfect example of a mobile vendor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in a mobile vehicle, yep. self-contained. Yep. He comes along and says, I want a permit for, you know, a short-term event. He comes along in his mobile vendors. We see these at the fireworks as well. Yep. Those are, those are, most of those are outfitted as mobile vendors. Okay. A and temporary food vendor and a mobile vendor are slightly different in our codes, but they do the same thing. Okay. And go to the same events. Typically, and so is the health code. Makes the terms. No, no, me interrupt your flow. You're mm. doing great, but when you say our codes, are you talking about our code? Health mean code, the food code, code, food code, our food state, code, state food code. The, okay. the state. So we don't have our own local code, right? We just, or do we? 
for for like for a mobile food, vendor. Yeah, oh, yeah, like mm-hmm. for food code. The, the reason we're mm-hmm. at, we're we're in the food truck ordinance. Yeah, yeah. right. Our okay. Purpose here, so we're uh, trying to figure out what regulations we have. When you ask a literal question, have. you're going to get a literal answer. So <laughs> here's literally the answer. Okay. The state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Public Health, has written um, a state food code. Okay. And um, we all have to follow it. In addition to that, though, okay. the East Hampton Board of Health several years ago voted to make that same wording a local code. Okay. So we so adopted the state, the food state code, code. Yes. We d- well, we adopted it, and the reason for that is because then we can attach to it non-criminal disposition, because now it's a local regulation. Right. And non-criminal disposition gives us the power to write tickets if okay. there are violations. And did, did the code change? Did we make any changes or, or enhancements to the code? No. Or, or is it just the state code as worded so we can enforce it? Um, I do not believe Dennis in, uh, made any enhancements to the food code. He okay. did to the state code for housing, which he adopted also, and for yep. camps, which he adopted also. But not I don't recall anything extra for food. And... and uh, um, Last question, because I don't want to keep you. No, you can keep it. I've got <laughs> um, special to do. Cost. That. Cost for, if I wanted to get a mobile vendor uh, license, say, for, I was getting a grilled cheese food truck. Mm-hmm. And what, what would the, if I wanted, say, I wanted to do it for the summer. What and do we have? $50. $50. Per day or for the entire duration? For the whole, for the season. Yeah. Okay. Or for, for the season. year. Oh, for you. Yeah. Oh, oh. I think she, I think the lady that sells the kibasa up there, I think she's $50. That's but reasonable. I'm not certain. That's reasonable. That's to the municipality for your, essentially, for Basically your, your inspection, inspection and anything else that the municipality would have to do to enforce anything that went on there, right. answer any questions, investigate. <laughs> and is it the same for temporary food? It would be the temporary same. food is limited to a maximum of 14 days. Okay. And a temporary food permit is $25. And it's typically one to two days long. Right. You know, like the people that are going to show up for the, some of the people, not all of them, showing up for the winter fest. Yes. You know, the uh-huh. chili cook off. Right. Mm-hmm. Some of them are going to be permitted as temporary food vendors. Some of them don't have to be because they're already, they already have a catering license. It gets a little complicated. Oh right, yeah. right, right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I mean, do you guys have any other questions? No. Okay. okay. Well, I have a question. Sure. Why are you considering making a mobile food? Permit. So Ordinance. the the um, impetus for it was looking at the fact that uh, now with the breweries in town, mm-hmm. they're bringing uh, they seem to be bringing in a lot more food trucks, and we wanted to encourage that. Mm-hmm. So we were we were hoping that you know there was we were gonna, we just wanted to look at the process and see if there was anything we could do to make it easier for food trucks um, oh. to to come in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we weren't trying to hinder or you know we we. Were, I think the, the, the real spirit of it was, what can we do to make this a, a smooth process so if the Mission Cantina truck wants to come from Amherst every weekend, it, you know, they only have to get one permit. But it seems like they only do, you know? And well, if, if the Mission Cantina, I don't know them particularly, but if anybody that had a mobile operation wanted to come for a day, uh, I would talk to them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Is this the only time you're going to come? Do you think you'll be coming back? We're going to be doing this, that, and another event. You're going to be coming to those also. This is for a vendor I've never talked to before. Yep. And depending on the question, the answer to that question, I might say to them, why don't you just get an annual permit? Right, right, right. right. Um, and that's only $50. Yeah. I, I did that just recently. Yeah. With somebody, I don't remember who the vendor was. Maybe it was the... The grilled cheese people, as a matter of okay. fact, it might have been them. I said, you know, instead of doing the two events, just get an annual permit. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what they do. Because then they can come whenever. Yeah. And so that was basically, you know, and then what we were talking about is, you know, since the kitchen needs to be attached, is there any zoning um, ordinance that we could do to encourage someone to open a commissary if, if they couldn't find, you know, if they wanted to have a food truck? You know, a specific one in one of the old mills or something where they opened a commercial kitchen mm-hmm. and had food, you know bays for food trucks and kind of similar to what they do in Boston. Wow, I don't know what they do in Boston. That's interesting. Yeah, but I mean, know, we do have a lot of kitchens in East Hampton that aren't used. So y- y- yeah, and I've sent these vendors. I say check with this church. In fact, yeah. recently I said, um, who was it? I can't remember who it was, but um, she came back to me and she emailed me back and said. I've checked with this church, and they said no. Another church, and they said they didn't have time. Another church, and they said absolutely no strangers are allowed in this kitchen. Right, 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 right. Um, 
I've seen different communities handle this differently. I've seen them even use schools uh -huh. in the town of Ashfield. Oh, wow. Um, a local nonprofit organization was making lasagna and selling it in an annual fundraiser, and the lasagna was being made in, in all the individuals' homes. And when I came to town, I said, ah, yeah. uh, uh. And they said, well, we've been doing this for years. It's a major fundraiser. I said, ah. Uh. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, you ought to be making something like lasagna, which is such a potentially hazardous food if it's not made in a clean environment. We can't control what's going on in your homes. You got kids, you got dogs, you got pets. Right. You know, who mm -hmm. knows? And, and it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. And it's also a liability. Yeah. If you get a bunch of people sick from lasagna you made in your home that you sold at the at the yeah. fundraiser, you're going to be in some significant liability. So that's what brought them around. That always does. And uh, then we work together with, okay, where can you make your lasagna? How about if you go to the school, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful school, and a community willing to share it, mm -hmm. and you all go with all your ingredients on a Friday night, and you have this big cook-off. You make your lasagna, you make your lasagna, you make... And then we, we got a person who was trained in food safety to oversee it. Mm -hmm. I didn't even have to be there. Yep. And then we're, they're covered for liability. They're doing it in a clean and permitted kitchen that I've inspected. I know is a good kitchen. We know the ingredients are coming from approved sources, real grocery stores um, and places. So we were all good with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they continued with their fundraiser. <laughs> so, yeah, communities can opt to do that. And in Greenfield, or somewhere up in Franklin County, I think it is Greenfield, they have a commercial kitchen. Yes. You know about this? Yes, the pickles and the kombucha, and it's like and this. And um, yes. I forget that woman's name that does the fudge and yeah. uh, the salsa. They have all it. sorts of different people that are yeah. in there, like canning. And and, yeah, and, exactly. And it's a so. commercial kitchen. It's permitted. It's clean. It meets all the requirements. And it's fully stocked with all kinds of right. stuff. And so that's the and kind of thing pay, you like. You pay to go in and use it for a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. Right. Like an entrepreneur if wanted to come to East Hampton to make a commercial kitchen like that. that right now, the so zoning wonderful. doesn't... I mean, it would be allowed within the zoning. Yeah, I don't see where... So we don't really... I don't think we really get to do anything zoning-wise, but to and promote a, something, to, yeah. you could get an entrepreneur to do it. Right. I and think it makes... I think it's a little niche that might... Yeah. Be. Well, it's, it's a going. great generator for small business. I've yeah. seen... Some of the brands I bet you have in your kitchens right now have come out of that little kitchen. Uh, definitely. I know I have... Mm. Right now, I know I have a couple things, for sure, that came from yeah. that Greenfield facility. Yeah. Where are they manufactured now? Well, one of them, I can't yeah, remember the name of the women that started. Oh, yeah, yeah they, they're just, like, um, I know, I got, like, um, a, a, a chili, um, like, relish from there. Um, I got a drink today. One of my students' dads is uh, just started the beverage company up there, and he's using that facility. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, all this bottling and mixing and everything is done up there. And everybody, everybody wants to go into the food business, by the way. <laughs> and that's the major drawback is like well like I'm, I'm working with a woman now who wants to sell a particular product and uh, she has some wealthy backer so whatever I've thrown at her for a requirement she seems to not flinch uh, she's rare mm -hmm. most people you know they have an idea they have a passion they know how to do it they think they can make a go of it but they've got to put a $15,000 kitchen in to make a $12 product that's going to take them 25 years to get a payback, right. you know, a buyback on it. So most people won't do that. Right. But they don't need the whole kitchen. They just need it for a certain period of time. Right. Well, so yeah, it, can, I, it can be shared. The, so that's right. And yeah. she was the last place she went to space. was uh, I sent her to Myers Eatery because uh, I think she went and talked to them about sharing some of their kitchen facilities on their mm -hmm. off hours. I don't know if that worked out, and I think she was finally giving up and going to work on her own kitchen space. Oh. But uh, yeah, that, that, that would, would be, be wonderful. That would be a really good fit for the mills too, to right. get something like that in there. So, sure all right, well that's that's really good to know. I mean, I, I, I think it kind of like there's, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of stuff that we're going to be able to do on mobile on, on food truck because it, you're, you 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 kind of have it covered, and it seems like it's pretty it's working. Well, it is, and we try to make it easy, and I, and I am not myself a believer in saying, um, if a community is broke, let's raise all the permits. Let's look at the yeah. permit fees. Let's see what yeah. they're doing next door at that community and do it as high as they're doing it. Uh, for one thing, the law and the spirit of the law says a fee for a permit is supposed to be tied realistically to the expense a community goes through to issue that permit, like you said, inspecting it and the administrative, you know, paperwork and a few phone calls a year. 
So um, and our fees are reasonable. Yeah, oh, well, I would they say fifty dollars for years. They could probably they could creep up a little. Yeah. Up a little. Yeah. Is it the board? And the board and the board I does have, that? Yeah, the board board of health sets rates, okay. and I actually initiated a conversation with them about two years ago mm -hmm. uh, about increasing rates, and we looked at all the rates. And we never finished that as a project. We got involved with tobacco regulations, mm -hmm. and then one thing after another. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we lost a board member, and it's been like that for almost a year now. And we just never got, it's still in the folder for the board mm -hmm. right. to, to do some days. Well, I would say, review the rates. probably come summer, there's probably going to be a pretty decent influx of food trucks, if, if what I hear is correct. So... If you if we get that fee up twenty five dollars or something, you, where are you seeing the influx? Uh, um, well, I know. Um, so I know the owners of the mills, and I know that there's um, at mill mill one eighty. I know there's a food truck that's going to be based from there. So and that's well, new. you say you know that, and I'm going to challenge that a little because they're not going to be based from there without talking. To well, them. well, what do you mean? Well, I mean he's going to. That's where he's going to park. So. He yeah, has, he has permission. Kind of on a permit basis. Yeah, he has permission from the owner because yeah. the owner owns that part of the. He has a you know, uh, uh, he owns that part of the parking lot basically. Well, and be sure to his, send them to me because oh, definitely that person and I should be talking now yes. so that he doesn't come to me three weeks before and then run into some obstacle that kills that whole plan for two months. Yeah, I think he's yeah. He's so looking I really at, encourage people to talk to me as early as possible so I can make it smooth for them. Absolutely, he's looking at you know probably summer. Um, at yeah. least from what well, I summer is like a skip away. Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> and, um, That's like just so. Like I, skip. I also know that the um, well, at least if this if this pass falls any indication that you know every weekend there was food trucks mm -hmm. behind the mills, mm -hmm. um, and at uh, Fort Hill Brewery, and I imagine that's probably going to just increase. So this is a good time for me to lobby for something, and this is not really a lobby, but it's just planting a seed. Um, I've recognized for a couple of years that East Hampton is at this kind of tipping point. Uh, we, we built this wonderful promenade, mm -hmm. we're, we're recreating all of Pleasant Street, upgrading all of that, bringing more people to the city, we're having more festivals which are getting mm -hmm. bigger and bigger every year. Tomorrow I'm going to be meeting with the Cultural Chaos Committee as an example to smooth out some of the rough spots from last year mm -hmm. that I saw when I was there all day food inspecting. And you still have one 34-hour-a-week health agent for the whole city to do 12 major areas of compliance. Mm -hmm. So as the city grows, food vend yeah, but Jackie Duda and no food inspector is going to work every day of the week and every weekend mm -hmm. inspecting food vendors. So at mm -hmm. some point, it's going to reach a point, maybe while I'm still here, maybe not, you know, in the next few years, where the city's going to have to increase the food inspection hours. Yeah. You know. I would say, yeah, and, uh, you know, that, that's definitely something we can kind of catch the mayor's ear on for sure. And, and I would also, you know, I think since the board sets the fees, looking at a modest increase mm -hmm. here, would, and, and maybe even saying, listen, it's, it's $75 for a year-long permit, mm -hmm. and when I come out to inspect you, it costs $25. So, you know, and so Setting that's... an inspection fee. Right. Yeah. And so, and because I, I think that's, that's reasonable. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of times... You know, when you get your car inspected, you have to pay an inspection fee, mm -hmm. um, and then you pay for it to be registered. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's you know, people are kind of used to that. And I, I think if it was, I mean, granted, now it's fifty dollars, but if it was like under a hundred, and you were able to come back multiple times and make, I mean, probably one one trip here, they'd be able to make the hundred dollars easy. You know, um, I, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, just and and maybe if we if there was. If, if we attacked it from both ends, um, the mayor might be more am amenable to throwing more money to make it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. um, I know that the budgets are pretty tight. That's and of course, all of these events happen where the weather's nice. Not now, yeah. when I'm not so busy. And I'm yeah, yeah, home right. early, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, the camps, the pools, the, the, the big festivals, the people wanting to sell food. And, yeah. You know, that all happens in the summer in addition to all the usual stuff that's sure. always going on. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's uh, not that I can't well, handle yet, but it's going to get to a point where uh, we're going to have an urgent need for another person. That's a good point. As we grow, we're definitely going to need And it's always good more. to have two people in a community um, trained to do this stuff. Sure. You know, so you can tag team. And so 
if I'm on vacation, somebody else can yep. do it, or somebody else knows how to do it mm -hmm. that's familiar with the city, not somebody you pull in from another community right. to help when you're absent. Right. It would be good to have a third Board of Health member, too. Well, it would be. Why don't you be on our board? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I have a lot going on right now. But, in fact, uh, I, have to check with the, I have to check with the mayor because we've been doing a little campaign to, to get interest in that. Oh, really? And we got replies this last time around. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And um, I spoke to three potential Board of Health members, and each of them were going to send a letter. Oh, good. They didn't. Oh. Then I spoke to them all again, and they said, oh, well, you know, holidays and all that. Right, right, right. I will, I will. And mm -hmm. now I want to check back with Mayor and see if she's gotten any letters. Right, yeah, that, yeah. I, I, I wish I could. It would be fun. I'm interested in it. It is interesting. It, but, um, I don't know, there might be a conflict, too, with, with being a city councilor. Being on the board of health. Well, there's Maybe. definitely a conflict. That's why I want you on the board. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, like a good way in. Yeah, right. I know. Well, I thank don't you. really know if there's a true conflict there. Or not, yeah, I don't that's know. Good thinking. Well, I know that someone there was. Um, I was just listening to the radio the other day, and someone from Hatfield was a member of the school committee and the select board. I was like, oh, that's, oh, that's interesting. Not unusual. <laughs> oh, in Middlefield, people are on the select board, the board of health. The planning board and something else. Wow. The, the conservation commission. I mean, because you know, in the city, I guess you have only when you're a town of 355 people, people, yeah, 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 people yeah, yeah. and that includes <laughs> elderly people and children. Right, 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 I mean, yeah. you've got many people have to fill multiple sure. boards, so that's just a reality. Well, we appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Glad you asked. Thank, thank you, you very much. Glad appreciate to meet that. you anytime. So I think that that helps us a lot in kind of you know creating a direction for this. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily see a need to create some sort of ordinance related to this. It would be interesting to, I'm, I'm going to look at what the mobile vending, or because I know that our mobile vendor ordinance, like, would not be applicable to, it's like someone pushing a cart is our mobile vendor ordinance. That's what it's made for. Because I remember I worked on it like seven or eight years ago. Because mm -hmm. was, there was a guy selling hot dogs in front of the brass cat. Right. And so we worked on a mobile vendor ordinance. So I wonder, the Board of Health must have a, have a different set of, you know, definitions or something. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, 50 bucks, if you want to bring a food truck to East Hampton for a year, you yeah. cannot beat that. And only have to get inspected once? I mean, that's easy. I mean, it's almost too easy. <laughs> well, has there been any talk about other interests and other, other perspectives? The, um, mobile from from oftentimes you'll hear from non the taxpaying the non mobile vendor right, 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 right. folks saying well this, this is this is I mean, competition sure. that is unfair that they're not paying tax they're not paying taxes to the community we are right. so that's a burden on us and then so we have this this we have a rent expense we have the tax you know we're paying your taxes. Right. We're still paying the permit fees, that, and, and here comes somebody on a truck, and they're taking away our business. But well, that's a good point. Is a tax it, point. So, uh, like, how do we? So, how do you, how do you balance those that? interests? No. Is 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 you, know, you want you want to make it open so that we get the best food available right. to the people that want it at the right time? Right. Because uh, I would almost think that that would seem like an accessory building if it was permanently housed there. Right. And that the, I don't know. It's temporarily it. permanent. Temporarily permanent, and you're there, and you're not paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Are you paying rent to the to the, to the, the building? landlord who yeah, then pays taxes? Who then pays taxes? Well, then that's a different. Right. It's a different that's scenario. A different scenario. Sometimes you're like like you're parked somewhere and you're not paying anybody's taxes. Right. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or, or is it enough of a niche that there isn't enough interest and everybody seems to have their own, I think right now own it's, peace and it's, that's great and yeah. we want to keep business booming sure. and people having those. Yeah, and, and you know, it's kind of hard that, that, that razor's edge of uh, regulation versus, um, you know, because I agree. I mean, if someone's coming into East Hampton and people are buying their food there and then they go back to Amherst and pay taxes in Amherst and... You know, that, that is a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. something I didn't think about. And so how do we, how do we find a way to recoup that, that piece of it? Or, or do we say, well, hey, if there's food trucks, more, it's going to bring more people to East Hampton from out of town, you know, to visit our attractions. 
and thus they'll spend more money in East Hampton. And that's a great argument. I, you know, right. Or and so then there's all these, um, and or you know, say, if if we're Amy Florick, who owns Amy's place, and she wants to get a food truck, you know, sure. and park it, right. have like a little satellite, Amy's truck. Yeah, that's right. And that's why I was I was thinking about and really trying to get this maker space for the kitchen. I think that would be okay, a really cool. You have maker space for a variety of different businesses. Mm -hmm. I, went, I went on a tour to to uh, Somerville last a few years ago, and we looked at maker space in the Boston area, and it was wild. They, they had like like uh, the, the best micro. Uh, my electron microscopes in <laughs> a maker oh, space. Really? Yeah, wow. they had they had gotten them donated by one of the you know MIT or oh, Harvard wow. or something in the maker space, and so everybody had access to that, and they wow. had access to to three uh, uh, D printers, all the kinds of equipment that you don't get in you know your average everyday space. Right. I can't afford to have a three D printer, but geez, if we, if if we have one in this maker space, we can all share that. Sure. That's why the concept with the kitchen and my thought is if you can bring those food trucks to East Hampton then we can get tax yeah. benefits from all Yeah, because if there's right. a kitchen if they're based in East Hampton. <clears throat> right. Then they, they, then that's where the tax base grows. And and there's still so much space that is underutilized at the mills. And with that new big giant parking lot in the back like that is ever expanding. Right. It's still going. They're still, They're still building it. I mean, it's paved. Part of it's paved, but it's still going. It's going to go all the way to behind Eastworks, and then that little road that goes up to next to Riffs, you know, and up to that little street. Mm -hmm. It's going to be huge. So I think that's maybe what we should take a look at. So I'm going to look at a couple of things. I'm going to look at the state um, code. And, and see what the difference is between a mobile and temporary food. Um, I agree. If I mean, if this takes off, that we're gonna, I think the Board of Health is going to have to raise their fees because I don't necessarily know um, that the mayor is going to have extra money to put in for more health agent. I just, knowing budgets, I would say I probably agree. not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but I really like this idea of the commercial kitchen ordinance or some sort of thing that we could do to make it easy for that to happen, I don't, I don't know what that would be. Or whether it's just, a, as a city council, we're outreach saying, hey, this is something that we think would be great in the city. You know, anybody interested, you know, um, give you a tax break for prorated over five years. That was something we did look at. Um, do you remember, oh God, what was his name? Bruce. Remember Bruce? Bruce Gordon. <gasps> Bruce Gordon. Yeah. Uh, I, remember, I remember. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah from he was the, the VA, VA guy. VA, yeah. VA administrator. So that one of the things we looked at under Bruce Gordon, God, this is a long time ago now, so I remember bending, my, <laughs> bending my memory. Remember we looked at tax incentives? We were looking at prorated tax in incentives for people that bought like old houses and were fixing them, like fixing them up. Mm -hmm. Like a, like a get the blight off of, East, you know, so it gives people that want to fix things up a tax incentive. That would be interesting to look at. You know, a prorated tax incentive, incentive over like five years. So, first year you save like um, fifteen percent. Second year you save, you know, thirteen, and then it goes down to you know full price um, for people that uh, rehab or do something that is a a high priority, need, you know, need or high priority project identified mm -hmm. in the city. That's too much for right now. It's a great idea. Yeah, Sorry, we, could, <laughs> we, we could pursue that. Yeah, what the heck? I mean, it would be. I mean, you could even do it for residential. It's like you know, people that are like have old crummy houses and they want to. As long as they don't flip them, as long as they're going to stay, right? There'd have to be some sort of an incentive for them to. Uh, to well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily knock flippers. For, you know, uh, yeah, I, true. I, I would I mean, turn around and say, I mean, if you're I, looking for the rehabilitation of the you know, rehabilitation of the property, that's great, and maybe you pay a little. Uh, a little get get a little less incentive right. or something. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but that would still in the end result is people have better housing and it raises property bigger, values. Look, it looks better. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it could be a, it could be like a um, that's a pretty progressive thought. I wonder if we we there's probably not too many communities doing that right now. On their own, no. Yeah. Well, let's work on that. That's later. That's later. Uh, all right. So how about so signs? How about this? How about what we do is for signs. We take that thing that I emailed you guys, 
Yeah, which, which is like, way, 18, I, I just got about 35 minutes. 18 <laughs> pages. Yeah. 18 about pages of An hour life. and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. And then, so at our next meeting, we take a look at that. Um, and you know what? We just go through the first five pages. And when you say we're going through it, are you saying let's apply the comments that Jessica recommends? I'm saying let's look at them. Okay. Let's, let's, let's get a hard copy of those. Let's go page through page, comment through comment, okay. and say we think this is a good idea, or we think we could, you know, maybe there's something else we can do here, and just just go. And then, you know, after a couple of meetings, we'll have gone through the whole thing, and mm-hmm. hopefully, we'll have a, a pretty good idea of like, yeah, we really support all of these things, or we really support a majority of them, or there, and there's just a couple that we don't. Uh-huh. Um, but I think that's probably, you know, once we've all read it and are relatively familiar with it mm-hmm. and then bring it to the table and say, you know, I looked at this one and this one is, just doesn't make sense or I really, this page is all makes perfect sense or mm-hmm. whatnot. Um, because there is, it, it's confusing. <laughs> I mean, it, it, yes. the comments, so for example, this one, um, just one comment, we'll see. You need you need to place this more than just a subsection needs to spell out the entire section reference, for instance, this section. Right. Or use one term or the other, not both. That's easy enough, but some of them are just, it really changes the entire document. Yeah, yeah. So, for the sake of time, I just wanted to see how to best approach it, because <laughs> taking a shot at it yeah. on my own is like, I could go this way, I could go this way, right, go right. this way. And, you know, I mean... I think when we were doing the LED sign thing, I found this sign ordinance that I just was in love with. It was like the best sign ordinance I've ever seen. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to think about bringing this a whole nother process in. So let's try to fix some of these inconsistencies. And then maybe 10 years from now, we can bring a new, like... Because, I mean, the sign ordinance that, I, I think I shared it with you, the was really pictures good. pictures and everything. It had pictures, it had diagrams, like everything was super clear, super concise, hmm. um, not so verbose. As, you have to remember, I mean, I, JP, you remember the process, I think, right? Were you on that committee with me sign, and sign, Ron Shatunov? It was, so basically what we did, it was probably a series of 15 or, or no, probably 20 or more meetings. Mm-hmm. Where we sat up at the big table upstairs with a whole full table, yeah. and went word by oh. word, yeah. and it was like there was battles between Ron and Clay. There was, I mean, there was like battles, yeah. epic battles, where they emailed each other like evil things and sent it to everybody. It was like, oh my God. it was so, a good healthy discussion. It was, it was, <laughs> it was. So you know, we ended up finding a a, a, a moderate document that was kind of like a balance of a lot of the things. But Which I, and I think a lot of it was ended up being okay. We just need to fix some of the things. The, idea, the idea of pictures in your sign or makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. sense. It makes a lot I mean, of sense. I really like that. Yeah, it's and really, it me- measurements it and so it clarifies sh- things. And, it, and yeah. it actually showed different styles of signs. So when you talk about different styles of signs, you actually can see what that looks like. If we, when, JP, when I find it, I'll, I'll email it to you Please so you can do, take a yeah. look at it. Because it's, like it's actually like, yeah. it's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. You know, how I think it was a model sign ordinance from somewhere in North Carolina. Um. <laughs> oh my goodness! Be specific. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Um, so if if that's if that sounds okay with you guys, I think we're probably good, and mm-hmm. we can take a look at setting our next meeting. Mm-hmm. Is that? That sounds good. Okay. Um. Let me just see here. Okay. I'm still like full on into basketball season right now. So our next meeting is the third for city council. So the tenth would be the next Wednesday. Do you guys is that too soon to take a look at this ordinance, or do you want to try to go? Do you want to do like the twenty fourth okay. of February? Either one works fine for me. Twenty fourth sounds okay. All right, let's do the twenty fourth then. Twenty fourth at six. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. February twenty fourth, six p.m. Oh, 27th, right? 27th. February. No, February 24th is the Wednesday. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm on January. What the heck? That's today. <laughs> Why is it? Okay, 24th. There you go. 6 p.m. And... Okay. Okay. 
Beautiful. All right. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. All right, Second. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right. Good job. All right. First meeting. Got some stuff done. <laughs> now I get to go to pra basketball practice until the nine o'clock. Oh, oh my good. gosh! Are you kidding? It's nonstop. At least I didn't have double duty tonight because normally I have like um, I'm coaching Chloe's team because mm -hmm. Carissa was gonna do it, but she's just so busy at the salon that yeah. there's just no way. So um, do you get any compensation for that, no. or is it volunteer? It's volunteer. Yeah, so I'm coaching my seventh and eighth grade suburban team.